Eight here, uh, before seven here on Morning Live, you can calm down. It's uh, still an hour left before that. So let's get into our interview, our top interview this morning. The uh, former president, Jacob Zuma, has filed an affidavit in the Constitutional Court claiming the Nugent Commission of Inquiry into SARS had no basis to recommend firing the former Revenue Services boss, Tom Moyani. In his affidavit, Zuma stated that the Nugent Commission had gone beyond its mandate and had not been tasked to deal with individual contracts of employees at SARS. Uh, this is subsequent to Moyani's application to review the decision to establish the commission and that its recommendations be set aside. Now, you remember that Moyani was fired by President Soro Ramaphosa recently after receiving an uh, interim report from retri retired Judge Robert Nugent. So to discuss this further, let's uh, have a conversation with uh, political analyst Professor Tiniko Maluleka. He is in our Pretoria studios. Uh, good to have you here on Morning Live. Prof, thanks for being our guest. Good morning, Leanne, and good morning to the viewers. So what was your initial reaction when you saw the uh, statement coming from uh, uh, our former President Zuma yesterday? Well, you know, uh, on a technical, uh, at, at the technical level, uh, the statement does not give us any new information. Uh, it's virtually tautological. It says exactly what uh, Tom Moyana's lawyers have been saying. But I think what is significant is that um, it is uh, supposedly an independent corroboration of what uh, Moyana's lawyers have been saying, namely that, or alleging, namely that um, the commission has veered uh, off the tech that has been set for it. And now comes the voice of an, an independent, not only an independent person um, in uh, former President Zuma, but one who can also claim to have been the author of the terms of reference uh, of the commission. So he brings in that authority yeah. uh, to bear on, on, on this discussion uh, between, between the two teams of lawyers. If we look at the timing of this, however, I mean, we're sitting here with uh, our now Public Enterprises Minister, Pravin Godan, testifying before the State Capture Commission. He's brought Tom Moyani into the conversation, basically saying how former President Zuma insisted on the appointment of Tom Moyani, despite uh, being advised not to do so. And of course, this all comes right on top of the commission. I mean, do you read anything into the timing of it? You know, the stakes must be very high uh, for both former President Zuma and um, Tom Moyane. Th they must be very high because ordinarily it shouldn't be necessary for a former president to enter the fray uh, in this manner. Uh, because what is happening is that um, he is also calling into question the authority of his successor, mm. uh, ultimately what we are being forced to discuss now is um, whether President Ramaphosa had any, any right or authority to, to enrich the terms of reference. Uh, because he announced towards the end of May the Nugent Commission, and he also announced then the terms of reference. Are we being told that he had no right to do that? Uh, so I think the stakes must be very, very high. And it is possible that uh, former President Zuma uh, feels that somehow he himself uh, might end up um, uh, being exposed, especially now that uh, uh, Moyane has been fired. Yeah. There's a very important part that uh, in the affidavit our former president writes. And I'm going to read it verbatim. And, and, and I think this is, this is quite telling. And you can give me your interpretation. It says, finally, I also wish to confirm that... At all material times thereto, President Cyril Ramaphosa diligently served as my deputy president, and he would have been familiar with the most important and relevant decisions made by the cabinet and or the presidency. Now, this is a very important statement, I would say, because, you know, everybody's been talking to the fact that, you know, Cyril Ramaphosa has come to the rescue and he's doing all of these things. But here is the president almost saying, hang on a second, he knew exactly what was happening uh, and he mustn't act as if he was sort of ignorant of this. Uh, what do you make of putting in there? Is this a, 
mere protection, what he did yesterday of Tom Moyani, or is this also an attack on the president himself, our Cyril Ramaphosa? Well, I think the former president is very unhappy that President Ramaphosa has taken this advice from the Nugent Commission uh, to fire uh, Moyane. That's, that's the bottom line, that he should not have taken that advice. Uh, I think he is throwing shade on him by suggesting that he has been my deputy, but he's no longer the deputy president of the country. He has the same powers uh, since February this year as uh, President Zuma had. And, and so the, the suggestion that he ought to continue uh, to, to take instructions as given to him by myself uh, is, is a little too rich. But, but I think there is, uh, there is also uh, the suggestion that uh, where was he when I did all this wrong? He was right by my side. There is that, uh, uh, that, 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 that a, a remark hidden in there also. Mm, mm. Also, uh, again, I'm going to read from, from the affidavit that was filed to the Constitutional Court. It says, it was never my intention, this is from, uh, um, from Zuma, saying it was never my intention or within my contemplation that the SARS Commission would ever issue interim recommendations before gathering all the evidence. To that extent, the SARS Commission has deviated from its original intended purpose. Has it deviated? What, what do you make of that? Do you, was Nugent within his right to say what he said, or has he deviated completely from what was originally intended? Well, you see, we have two places to look uh, uh, for that. I mean, we look at that affidavit, which I had a look at. But the other place we look at is on the, towards the end of May when President Ramaphosa announced um, the composition of uh, the commission as well as uh, the themes of its terms of reference. Included in there is the expectation of an interim report. Included in there is the question of the, the conduct, of uh, the impact of the conduct of the, and the integrity uh, of, the, of the leadership of, uh, of SARS. So the question is, are we being told that uh, when President Ramaphosa made that announcement at the end of May and also framed the terms of reference the way he did, he had no authority to do that. I mean, we have only one president uh, in this country, and he was the president of the country. And, and that is what uh, Nugent has taken, I believe, as the terms of reference for his work now. Yeah. If, if we look deeper, and perhaps you can give us a little bit of understanding here, um, does this affidavit have any bearing in this process? Because if we look at the actual commission, the, the, the commission was, was not established by Jacob Zuba. It was actually done by President Ramaphosa months after uh, former President Zuma was no longer the president. So perhaps help us understand that. Well, my recollection is that uh, former uh, finance minister um, Malusi Gigaba yeah. uh, during the second half of last year uh, did start a uh, talk about a, 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 an inquiry into the affairs of uh, SARS, especially their failure to collect mainly. And, and I think that late in the year, I think it was in November, in the middle of November, he did announce that finally he got the president um, to agree. So it's not as if the president was very enthusiastic about it in the first place. It seems to me that even Malusi, uh, former minister Malusi Kigawa, had to persuade him. Uh, but I don't remember an announcement of the terms of reference for this commission by former president Jacob Zuma. I know that in May, President Ramaphosa announced the commission, told us who will head it, who will be the members, and he also uh, gave us a framework for the terms of reference. Yeah, yeah. If we look back um, at certain other instances where commissions have actually come forward and, and issued interim reports. Now, let's, let's talk to perhaps the Marikana Commission. We saw that, remember, they, they, they issued an interim report where I think they were saying basically that they should uh, recommend criminal prosecution of the police involved. Now, very much so the similar uh, recommendation has been made by Nugent uh, with regard to the fact that Tom Oyani was not fit to hold office. Was Nugent in, 
was he right in doing what he did? I mean, when a commission is sitting, we know that their findings are not necessarily binding, they are just recommendations. But was he in, within his right domain to rec recommend what he did? Well, you know, we'll have to wait for a court because obviously this matter is going to court uh, to, to take us out of our m misery as far as that is concerned. What is very clear for, 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 for ordinary South Africans is that commissions are appointed by president and commission re commissions report back to the president. That's in the constitution. The president of the country is Cyril Ramaphosa. He has appointed this commission and uh, it, it, is, it is up to him and the commission to work out the timing and the modalities of the reporting. But the broad framework is in the constitution that uh, the, the president appoints a commission. I don't know that a former president can come and uh, continue to dictate uh, the work of a commission, especially if he did not um, uh, promulgate it and announce it and, and, and announce the terms of reference. Mm. Two more questions I want to ask you as we, as we begin to wrap up. Um, he has also, Tom Moyani, now wants to cross-examine Minister Godan. Are there any chances of him actually redeeming his reputation or vindicating himself through cross-examination? Well, I think uh, it's possible and I think justice allows for that. Uh, and I, I'm sure that um, uh, Justice Zondo will be, will be sympathetic uh, to him if he wants to, to cross-examine. And one can understand why he, he, he says this, because his name uh, has not been covered in glory in the testimony that has been given uh, by Pravin, uh, Minister Pravin Godan so far. Mm. And then finally, does he have any chance whatsoever of getting his job back, uh, Tom Moyani, after what's already been decided and now with this new development? I doubt it very much, Leanne. I really doubt it very much because what is happening now is that the relationship between him and President Ramaphosa is getting worse. It's not getting better. So I don't know how they would be able uh, to work together uh, going forward. I, I suspect that what is happening here is that uh, perhaps he is looking for a better way of getting out for some kind of... Uh, recognition, maybe some compensation, I don't know. But I don't, I don't see him going back to this job. Right, we leave it there. Thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Professor uh, Tiniko Maluleke is a political analyst giving us uh, his views about former President Jacob Zuma filing papers in the Constitutional Court in support of former SARS boss Tom Moyani. We take a